Okay, first, the search bar in your app drawer, it's not just for searching for apps. Let's pick up a Netflix show, Wednesday. And if you see, it gives me results from pictures in my gallery that have the word Wednesday, and even Netflix and YouTube results. And obviously from here, I can just tap on the Netflix result, Wednesday, and directly go into the show. And guys, you could search for anything. You could be looking for a contact or a file or a YouTube video, or even if it's just an app, you can start your searches directly from here. Next, you can set an important notification to come back to you by clicking on the snooze icon and then deciding after how long it should reappear. And that way, not everything needs to go into your to-do list. Now guys, did you know the file manager in your Samsung phones is extremely capable? You can directly connect your Google Drive and OneDrive in here. So I can see all my Google Drive files right here and I can open them or download them. Now you might ask, why can't I just use the Google Drive app or the OneDrive app? That's because firstly, you get all the file manager options like sorting and filtering, but you can also easily transfer files from your Google Drive to your local storage. So I can just copy the file, go into a local folder and just paste the file here. And so file management becomes super easy. Okay, so in the camera, if you just swipe the shutter key down, it starts burst shots. And if you're trying to capture a moment in the action, this is a great way to do it. It's most likely already set in your phone, but if it's not, go into camera settings, click on swipe shutter button two, and you can set it to either burst or create a GIF. By the way, you can very easily take a picture by just showing your palm to the camera. And in case it doesn't work for you, just go into settings, go into shooting methods, and then turn on the show palm setting. Additionally, you could also just drag your shutter button and keep it anywhere where it's easy for you to click and take a picture. Again, if it's not already working out for you, go into the same settings and turn on the floating shutter button option. Next, now I'm surprised that many of you still search for a contact before you call them. So let's say you want to dial me, Karan. Tap on numbers that have K-A-R-A-N. And there you go, all people with this name will pop up. And now you can decide who to call by just swiping on them. Let's try again for Shruti. So I tap on S-H-R-U-T-I and all Shrutis in my phone book appear over here. And I can simply tap on the one that I was looking for. And so really guys, stop going into your dialer, then into contacts, then search for a name. I mean, that's how people on iPhone would do it. Okay, now look at this. Let's say I take a screenshot to share with someone. So I tap on share from the toolbar and let's say I share it with myself. There you go, sent. And now if I do this, the screenshot is auto deleted from the gallery. So if I go into my gallery and into screenshots album, it's not there. And so screenshots, they don't pile up on my phone and just be there. So to do this, uh, just go into screenshot settings or you could just long press on the screen recorder tile and then toggle this feature that says delete after sharing from toolbar. Just make sure that this is turned on and that's it. Your screenshots will not pile up after you share. Next, do you see these shortcuts on my home screen? So if I want to go into my Instagram DMs, I could just do that with one click. Or let's say I want to quickly add an event into my calendar. Again, just one click. Or let's say I want to quickly take a selfie or just instantly take a video. I could just tap on these shortcuts and directly get into that mode. Okay, doing this is pretty simple. Just long press on the app icon. It'll give you some options that you can then long press and drag out as a shortcut. So if you click on them, it directly takes you to whatever it is that you want to do. And you can try this for as many apps, you know, long press on WhatsApp. It's got a camera option. And if you, you know, tap on the camera option, it instantly opens up WhatsApp camera. You take a picture and you can share it directly. Just try this for different apps and see what's there. The other thing that people don't use enough is the side key shortcut. So, you know, you can double press it to launch the camera or your email or Google or any app that you use very frequently. It could even be the calculator. So to set this up, go into your settings and search for side key, right? And if you see there are options for double press and you could set it to launch any app that's installed on your phone. So yeah, just select from this entire app library and it will open that app. Okay guys, did you know that you could completely backup your phone on a pen drive? So just connect a pen drive, go into accounts and backup and click on external storage transfer, right? Give it the required permissions and you'll see a USB storage appear if you've connected a pen drive. Of course, you can do that using any adapter. When you click on USB storage, it'll ask you, hey, what all do you want to backup? Everything, just calls, contacts and messages, or do you want to decide? 
and you can decide all things that you want to back up. Just make sure you've got the storage in your pen drive. And yeah, just click on backup and you have an offline backup of your phone. Now guys, the fastest way to transfer small or big files, you know, files that are as big as multiple gigabytes, like this one's two gigabytes, is to use quick share between Galaxy devices. So I've got like a flip phone over here and I've got a Galaxy Tab S7 over here. And if you see those two show up automatically and I can just decide which phone or which tablet I want to send this two gigabyte file to and just look at that speed. It's like a couple of gigabytes that are getting transferred within a few seconds, like in under one minute. Just make sure that quick share setting is turned on into whatever device you're sending it to. And of course, quick share is only a Galaxy smartphone or a Galaxy tablet feature. Now, a lot of times you want to share pictures with people who are not around you, but then you don't want the pictures to lose quality. There's a great way on Samsung phones to do that. So select the photos that you want to send and then click on share. Now don't use WhatsApp or Telegram because you know they're going to drop the quality down, but you want to send in full quality, right? So click on quick share and then choose copy link. And what that would do is upload these files temporarily to cloud and it will generate a link and give it to you, which you know you can then just copy. So once the uploading is done and you can upload up to five gigabytes, by the way, you'll get the link just copy that link and then send it to whoever you want to send it to and they can just download the files onto their phones for free. Now guys, all Samsung smartphones can record your screen, okay? So you click on screen recorder and it starts to record your screen. But what's great is that you can annotate, you can draw. So you can really help someone else understand what you're trying to say, you know, give them guidance or it could be a tutorial. And it's really easy that way. I use it a lot at work. You can also turn on your front camera. So that sort of adds another dimension uh, and helps the other person really understand what you're trying to say. Pretty cool stuff. Next, let's say you've taken a picture and there's an element in the picture that you just want to get rid of. So click on edit, tap on these three dots and click on object eraser. That's it. Now circle around the element that you want to get rid of and click on erase it would magically disappear. Sure, it may create a bit of distortion, but not every time, it actually works pretty well. So let's say you wanna get rid of this guy. What I can do is click on object eraser, zoom in and just draw around this person. And then I can just say erase and just look at that, okay? If you zoom out, it looks like the person's gone. It's not perfect. I mean, if the background is very complicated, it may be inaccurate, but if the background is clear, it works like a charm. Now, if you're having a video call on your Galaxy smartphone, it could be any app. You can have a blurred background, you could have a colored background, you can have any image as a background. And if you go into mic settings, you can have it on voice focus, which automatically eliminates any sound that's around you. And this works on many apps. So to do this, go into settings, go into advanced features, and then click on video call effects. Now here you can set the colors that you would want to pick from when you're on a call. If that color is not here, you can create your own color. You can add a background image over here, right? And see, it works for all of these apps that are already installed on my phone. Now, another thing to do on Galaxy smartphones is to go into notifications, go into advanced settings and turn on notification history. It's turned off by default. And this way, if someone deletes a message that they sent or you mistakenly dismiss a notification, you could go all the way back 24 hours and look at those notifications. So yeah, this is built in your Galaxy smartphones. Okay, this one's pretty cool, guys. Let's say you highlight something and you copy. Then you highlight something else and you copy that. And then you highlight something else and copy that. You can access everything that you copied in a nicely organized list on your edge panel. And then you can copy it from there and then paste it. And then you can copy something else, right? Uh, and then you can paste that. So it's sort of a clipboard manager, but it's on the edge panel, which makes it super easy for you to access. And hey, it also contains images, any screenshots that you took, so you can just copy them at any instant and paste it. To activate this, go into your display settings, go into edge panels, and then go into panels. Just make sure that edge panels is turned on. And then look over here for clipboard. Mine's already selected, but yeah, select yours and you're set. Another really cool edge panel is calculator. So you don't always have to look for the calculator app. If you want to do a quick calculation, you can do it and it maintains your history so you can refer back to what it is that you did. 
Now you're gonna have to download this. So go into the Galaxy Store within Edge Panel Settings and then look for the calculator panel. It's going to be there somewhere. Just download, install, and then when you go back to your panels, just make sure that you enable it and that's it. And lastly guys, if you go into your recent apps and tap on an app icon, an app that you use a lot, and you click on keep open, you'll see this lock icon appears. What that means is that this app will always stay in your RAM and it'll open up really quick. So you can do this for apps that you use very often or apps that you don't want should refresh themselves if you've not used them for a while and they always stay where you left them. All right guys, so those were a few features that's present in almost all Galaxy smartphones but they're quite underrated and I don't see everyone use these features and hopefully there was something in there that could be of benefit to you. And guys, just like this, I've done another video which talks about seven really underrated Samsung apps that are already on your phone. I'll link that video right here. Definitely watch it out. All right, thanks for watching guys. If this was helpful, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon and mark all. Really helps the channel grow. I'll see you guys in the next one.